We've already learned that an electron wave like this can be transformed into another shaped wave like this, but that this only happens when the light is in resonance with a change in the waves, when the frequency of the light's oscillating electric field matches a change in the shape and size of the electron wave. This process is called absorption. But what are 1s and 2p electrons, and what do these numbers and letters represent? In this video, we are going to be focusing on the numbers, which is a characteristic of the electron wave. It is important to understand characteristics of the electron wave so we understand how light is transforming the electron wave. Let's investigate. Before we look at the complicated three-dimensional waves that describe electrons, let's look at an easier to picture one-dimensional standing wave. A standing wave, also called a stationary wave, is a wave with fixed boundaries with zero at the edges. This is a wave with one loop, meaning only one half of wavelength. We'll use loops to refer to half wavelengths. This is the smallest number of loops an electron wave can have. If there were no loops, there wouldn't be a wave. Adding the right amount of energy will transform our lowest energy wave, one loop, into a wave with two loops. When we added a loop, the wavelength became shorter. What does that mean about the energy of an electron with two loops compared to the energy of an electron with one loop? That's right, when we have more loops, we have more energy. Think about the relationship we found between frequency and wavelength of light waves. Because the wavelength decreases as we add loops, the frequency and energy increases. You can also think about battle ropes in the gym. It is much harder to make waves that look like this versus waves that look like this. It requires more energy. What is between one and two loops? Because we insisted that our standing wave be bounded in zero at the edges, you can't have anything between one and two loops. The number of loops are known as n, which in quantum mechanics we call the principal quantum number, just one of the four quantum numbers we will discuss when describing the characteristics of an electron wave. Electron waves with larger values of n have more loops and are higher energy waves. What would happen if we added even more energy to this wave? Depending on the amount of energy we're talking about, either nothing happens because there is no resonance, or we add a whole number of loops. Adding some energy might transform our two-loop wave into a three-loop wave, or adding a relatively higher amount of energy might transform it into a four-loop wave or a five-loop wave. Let's illustrate this energy change using an energy level diagram. Recall that these diagrams have a single axis, the vertical axis, which is energy. Things higher in energy are higher up on the axis. These lines represent n, or the number of loops. If we have an electron wave with one loop and we add just the right amount of energy, we can transform the electron into a wave with two loops. These diagrams are great for consolidating information about energy, but don't ascribe more meaning than that. The two-loop wave is not farther away or higher than the one-loop wave, it just has more loops and so it is a higher energy wave. Let's add the actual energies of the electron wave states to our diagram. In a later video, we will learn more about where these numbers come from. What would happen if light with energy 1.635 attajoules shines on an electron wave with n equals 1 initially? The energy required to transform an electron from an n equals 1 wave state to the n equals 2 wave state is 1.635 attajoules. Since the light's energy matches this energy change in the electron, the light is absorbed and the electron is transformed. What would happen if light with energy 1.80 attajoules shines on an electron wave with n equals 1 initially? Nothing happens. Since the light is not resonant with the change in the electron, it will not be absorbed. This light is transparent to the electron. This might seem a little weird because it looks like there's more than enough energy for an n equals 1 to n equals 2 transformation, but since there's no resonance, nothing happens. That is one of the big ideas that led to the realization that electrons must be behaving like waves. What would happen if light with energy 1.938 attajoules shines on an electron wave with n equals 1 initially? None of these are correct. Each of these incorrect answers represents a big misconception in the idea of what electrons are and how they behave. We know that absorption happens slowly, over the course of about 100,000 oscillations, so there is no jump and it takes time for this process to occur. Also, 
n equals 2 and n equals 3 are not places or levels. They are different descriptions of the electron wave. This light is resonant with the n equals 1 to n equals 3 transformation, and so that is what happens. Our wave with one loop gains two loops to become an n equals 3 wave, which is higher in energy. But electrons are not one-dimensional. They're giraffes. No, they're three-dimensional waves. In the next video, we'll see how we can take the big ideas we learned in this video and apply them to 3D electron waves.